The world of video games is filled with myths and misunderstandings that come from a misinterpreted moment or a small detail that goes over players' heads. Although these misconceptions are 100% wrong, they stick to that collective mentality and eventually lead to a widespread belief that's based on a lie. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 video game facts everyone gets wrong. Number 10. Bayek didn't found the Assassin's Brotherhood. Assassin's Creed Origins. Assassin's Creed Origins shed some light on the earlier stages of the franchise's titular order. In the game, you get to see Bayek and his wife Aya create the Order of the Hidden Ones and become the world's first assassins. Given the similarity between the Hidden Ones and the Assassin's Brotherhood, it's easy to assume that Bayek and Aya have founded the latter organization as well, and the Hidden Ones is just an antiquated term for it. However, that's not actually true. The two organizations are two completely different groups. While the Hidden Ones are the precursors to the Assassin's Brotherhood, the Brotherhood isn't a direct continuation of the Order. The Brotherhood is actually an offshoot of the Order that was founded by Hassani Sabah, the leader of a real-life Order of Assassins that the Brotherhood is based on. In the game's lore, Hassan fled Egypt and reorganized the Hidden Ones into the Brotherhood, maintaining the Order's creed but changing it from a clandestine sect into a public group that began operating with people more openly. This is also why Bayek becomes canonically forgotten, as it was thanks to Hassan that the assassins became recognized by history. All this means Hassan wasn't just the founder of the order, he was clearly also its first PR manager. Number 9. Myron didn't invent Jet. Fallout 2. Jet, the time-altering drug from Fallout, is one of the most controversial items in the series. And no, it's not because it's made out of cow farts and fertilizer. The reason why is that throughout the series, the origin of the drug seemed to differ. In Fallout 2, the player learns that the drug was invented by Myron, a post-war teenage chemist who developed it for a powerful cartel on the West Coast. However, despite this, Jet can be found all over America, even in pre-war locations that no one should have had access to. This has led people to believe that Jet's lore is inconsistent or perhaps retconned. However, the truth is much simpler. Though Myron has perfected the formula for making Jet in the post-war era, he actually hasn't invented the drug. Different variations of Jet existed before Myron's creation, which is why the Jet inhalers differ from each other depending on which game you're playing. The lore is actually pretty consistent, as the pre-war mentions of Jet fit nicely with its widespread availability in America. Not to mention, it'd make sense for an arrogant brat like Myron to exaggerate his own accomplishments. Number 8. The Bite of 87 versus The Bite of 83 Five Nights at Freddy's the lore of Five Nights at Freddy's is an iceberg-sized convoluted conspiracy pile that lures in the series' fanbase with an air of mystique and a lack of detail. Because the games never explain what's happening, players have to use sparse clues to fill in the gaps. And while that can certainly be a fun rabbit hole to go down, it leads to plenty of misunderstandings. One of the greatest confusions among Five Nights at Freddy's fans is the misconception regarding two similar but distinct events the Bite of 83 and the Bite of 87. A lot of fans assume that the incident where a child gets their head smashed by Freddy's jaws showcased in the fourth game is the Bite of 87. However, in reality, the event in question is the Bite of 83. The mistake is mostly the result of a viral clip of YouTuber Markiplier reacting to the cutscene and wrongfully calling it the Bite of 87. However, in-game clues and files reveal that the incident couldn't have been the Bite of 87, as the victim of that event was a staff member and not a child like the one in the cutscene. You gotta know your bites. Number 7. The Outsider is just a guy. Dishonored. The Outsider is one of the most enigmatic figures within the Dishonored universe. He's an otherworldly being that bestows dark powers on people that catch his interest, with little to no explanation as to why. His presence within the series is quite significant, as is Outsider's interaction with Corvo and Emily, which starts off the story for both the first game and the sequel. Due to his omniscient influence and the legends about him you find throughout the series, most people assume that the Outsider is a god of this universe, 
or at the very least, some kind of primordial force that's existed since the dawn of time. However, the reality of things is much simpler and look, maybe a bit more disappointing. The Death of the Outsider, a sequel to Dishonored 2, reveals much about the titular character's nature, but hints can also be found in Dishonored the First. The truth of the matter is that the Outsider is just a cursed human, and all of his godlike powers are a result of ancient magic. Of course, the misconceptions are a lot more interesting, so if you want to pretend he's a god even after knowing the truth, no one's going to judge you. Number 6. Ethan was dead all along. Resident Evil Village. The plot of Resident Evil Village is pretty straightforward, and yet every now and then it can shock you with some pretty outlandish moments. Surprisingly enough, these have nothing to do with the vampire dragon, metal shaping wizard, and werewolves you fight throughout the game, but rather with its main protagonist, Ethan Winters. Multiple times throughout the story, Ethan displays supernatural abilities like reattaching his severed arm and surviving lethal injuries with no explanations whatsoever. They happen out of the blue, leaving most most players incredibly confused. This is because most players don't realize that Village's Ethan isn't even human. Ethan's random abilities are easily explained by the secret that Resident Evil Village hints at multiple times throughout its story, that the real Ethan Winters died in the previous game. Yep, the Ethan you play as is actually just the mutant mold you fight in Biohazard, taking on his form and personality after his death. The hints for this are left by other characters in Village, who are all aware of Ethan's true nature, but because you play as him and he's completely oblivious to it himself, this fact can go over your head pretty easily. Number 5. King Kaelin Wasn't Innocent – Dragon Age Origins At first glance, the main villain of Dragon Age Origins, Loghain, seems like your typical power-hungry tyrant. He lets his king die in the battlefield against Darkspawn, and then goes on to usurp his throne and persecute your character for no apparent reason whatsoever. Well, except he actually has quite a few good reasons. You see, a big part of Loghain's character is his hatred of Orle, the country that used to occupy his homeland of Ferelden. His disdain for Elysian seems to drive him to make irrational decisions, as it is why he refuses to call the Elysian Grey Wardens for help and why he betrays King Caelan at Ostagar. When you play the game normally, Loghain's actions seem to be the result of sheer paranoia, but if you actually bother to read the books and notes spread throughout the world, which let's be honest, I don't know, I don't, most people don't, but you would learn it was all justified. The notes reveal that Kaelin did in fact want to divorce Loghain's daughter Enora and marry the Empress of Orle, bringing Ferelden back under Orlesian control. So yeah, although his methods were absolutely questionable, had Loghain not left Kaelin to die, Ferelden would have quickly lost its independence. Number 4. No, Abigail was not a rat. Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption 2 tells a story of intrigue and betrayals, which is why, towards the end of it, most players don't know who to trust anymore. This is why the game's community came up with a theory, which, despite being false, has spread throughout the internet so much that a lot of people think it's true. The theory concerns the rat within Dutch's gang that sold the crew out and led to its eventual downfall. Though the game makes it clear that it was Micah, some people believe it was Abigail, because in a dialogue with Dutch, in Guama, he appears suspicious about how easily she escaped from the Pinkerton's hideout. Now, given her attitude towards Dutch, that might seem like a compelling theory. However, in truth, it can easily be disproven by paying close attention to the events of the story. While Abigail does indeed escape relatively quickly from her capture, it's clear she manages to do so because of the chaos that ensues when Arthur and the gang arrive at the scene. The theory, if anything, is just proof of the brilliance of Red Dead's writing, which can fool players themselves into succumbing to the same paranoia and tension building up within Dutch's group. Number 3. Kamsky isn't the villain. Detroit Become Human Elijah Kamsky, the creator of the androids in Detroit Become Human, is an enigmatic figure that you don't get much information on as you play the game. Even in the brief face-to-face -face interaction with Kamsky, only a little is revealed about his past and what kind of person he is, which is why so many people have the wrong idea about him. Due to his demeanor and his apparent lack of concern for life, both human and android, most assume that Kamsky is the villain who seeks to prevent 
prevent androids from freeing themselves from the influence of his company, Cyberlife. However, you just need to delve a little deeper into the story to realize that it was actually Komsky who allowed the androids to free themselves in the first place. The hints in the game and the secret ending with Komsky imply it was actually him who wrote the RA9 virus and released it onto Cyberlife, which let androids see if they have what it takes to become sentient. All right, so to be fair, Komsky does it more out of curiosity than kindness, but the man is genuinely sympathetic towards the android cause, and he does want to see his creations prove that they're more than simple machines. Number two, Arceus isn't a god, Pokemon. The introduction of Arceus, the literal god of the Pokemon universe, has raised a lot of questions and concerns among the fans of the series, mostly due to the fact that you can capture him in all games after Pokemon Platinum. So how is it possible that Arceus can be contained inside a ball? What happens to the order of the universe when he faints or gets stored on your PC? And finally, wouldn't keeping him give you access to all kinds of godlike powers? Well, as it turns out, all of these questions are the result of some misinformation. The Arceus you meet in Pokemon games isn't the actual god Arceus, but rather an aspect of him. The creature you catch is an avatar, and one of many which appears in the world to interact with mortals. That's why when you catch him, the world doesn't end and you don't become a god yourself. The real Arceus still exists somewhere out there, watching over the world, while the one that's stored inside your Pokeball is just a fraction, albeit a very powerful one, of his actual being. So don't worry, the fate of the world isn't actually kept in a random 10 year old's pocket, and that's probably for the best. Number one, Michael was never in witness protection. Grand Theft Auto V. Despite being a major plot point in Grand Theft Auto V's story, Michael's betrayal of his original crew and his subsequent escape to Los Santos don't really get explained much, which is why they get misinterpreted so frequently. Most GTA V players assume that Michael's new life and identity are a result of him getting into the Witness Protection Program. However, this is simply not the case, and in fact, it doesn't really make sense in the context of GTA V's story. You see, the deal Michael cut with Dave, the FIB agent who caught him at the beginning of the story, wasn't a legal agreement. That's why when Dave asks Michael for favors, he keeps talking about making sure that his fellow agents don't look too deep into his archives. The whole game happens because Michael isn't protected by the government, which forces him to run errands for Dave. The witness protection angle never made sense and somehow it's how most people interpret the story. 